grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Hello, and thank you for joining me again on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Minister Chantrell Davis. Today is December 7th of 2015. I have an awesome word from the Lord today. I know that this message will edify and give understanding for those who may not know these things. Some of you may, but I minister as it is given to me. I am going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm alive for such a time as this. I want to thank you for this day that is new to me, your mercy that is new to me this day. Father, I want to thank you for the spirit and the will to get up in obedience to do what you have called me to do. I want to thank you that I've been empowered by your Holy Spirit to proceed in the things of the Lord and the ministry you have set before me. Father, in the name of Jesus, by faith, I make full proof of this ministry, leaning onto you and not my own understanding, completely relying upon you, Father, not by my own might, but by your power and your might in my spirit. And I thank you, Father God, for the word of truth, the word of knowledge, your word of love, your word of wisdom, Father. I thank you that you give it to each of us liberally as we ask you. I thank you, Father, that you have qualified me and made me a minister and a dispenser of the gospel that is your grace. And I thank you, Father, for every listening ear today. I plead the blood of Jesus over every ear that hears this message, not just this day, but every day to follow. Because your word is anointing, and it is anointed, and it has no time limit, Father. It is not in a box. You are just inexhaustible, Father, and I thank you. I plead the blood of Jesus over every heart. Father, I pray that it is cultivated and ready to receive the word, that it is rooted deeply, Father, and it develops into good fruit, that they move forth and take everything they've heard here and learn as they meditate on that word and it gets in their heart that they are able to teach others. Father, I come against every principality and power and all spiritual wickedness that would set itself against your knowledge, set yourself against this word this day. I bind it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood according unto thy word, and I loose your wisdom and joy and peace in edification from this word, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you are with me and you are for me, and no one can successfully be against me. Father, I thank you that I am hid in your pavilion and that I am girded up and built up by your Holy Spirit. You are awesome, Father. You are so worthy of praise. I bless you this day, Father. I present myself as a living sacrifice, which is my reasonable act of worship, holy and acceptable according unto thy word. I thank you once again, Father, for you are good and you are worthy. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray. Amen. The name of this message today is called With Fear and Trembling. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. The Lord gave me this message some time back. I can't exactly remember when I did it. I put it out first in a blog and it, it, he has led me to record this in a ministry message, which is why I'm doing this today. And I'm going to move forth because I want to make sure I hit every scripture that's given here just to help give understanding of these different uses of fear and trembling from having, you know, fear for those who are not his, you know, that's a different kind of fear. Then you have the fear of the reverence and respect and you have the fear that's the fear that's awe and the trembling that's joy. He's telling you to tremble with joy. How do you explain those things? And everyone has used this that I've seen one way, having people work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Speaking of which, I'm going to start with Philippians 2 verse 12. Wherefore, beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work at your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, many have used this scripture to push the law and the works of the law of man obtaining salvation. And this is an error. That is an error for you to teach that we have to work work to obtain salvation. Because the Bible explicitly tells us that we cannot earn this gift. Salvation is a gift. It can never be of works. I'm going to read Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 7 through 9. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved, through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I want to stop there for a minute. Because I did another uh, message called, Our Father worketh, hitherto we work. 
because I want you to understand, and I'm going to get that when I get out to the work out part so you can understand what he means. Matter of fact, I'm going to just stick to that. I'm going to wait till I get down there because you're going to get where I'm going really quick here. I'm going to read uh, Philippians 2 verse 12 in the Amplified so you can get a little bit more understanding on this. Verse 12, therefore, my dear ones, as you have also obeyed my suggestions, not now only with the enthusiasm you, sh you, sh you would show in my presence, but much more because I'm absent. So you're supposed to be enthusiastic, but you're even more enthusiastic of the things of the Lord now that he's absent, even though we know he resides within our heart. Now, I want you to understand, to work out your salvation, we're going to go to this work out so you can understand. It doesn't mean you sit idle and don't do anything, but you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. You're not doing it to obtain salvation. Work out is to cultivate, to carry out the gold and fully complete. You heard Paul say, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You have completed everything you were put here to do, to, to, to fully work out your goal, to work out your own salvation with reverence and with awe, and with trembling, self, this is self-distrust. You don't trust yourself. You trust God. You work out with trembling because this is another way trembling the Jews. With serious caution, with tenderness, conscience, watchfully, you to do it watchfully against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God. We are not to be timid as children of God, but we should move in, we, we should, when he said shrinking, Lower yourself so that the spirit man can stand up. That we move forth humbly and meekly that with whatever might offend God or discredit the name of Jesus Christ. We do this and we make full proof of our ministry. And another thing, what we are to work out, another way for me to put this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We are to work out the desire that he has placed in our heart. We are to work out the gifts the talents, the abilities to make full use of them. He has put gifts and talents and path. He has a predestined path. You have predestined gifts that are given to you by the Holy Spirit, and he gives you desires to do certain things. You have a desire. You got some people that desire to do certain things. He put those desires in your heart so that you will be driven to do them because they are to be used for your ministry. The what it is is most people take their desires and their gifts and talents and they go use it for the world when it was meant to be used for the kingdom of God. This is why some people can write, some people decorate with ease, some people paint with ease. All that you have that is a gift can be used to the glory of God and that is why it has been given. The Lord creates the desires in his heart according to his plan, his purpose, and his will for your life. I'm going to read Philippians 2 verse 13. For it is God which worketh, well, 2 verse 13, I hope that's what I said. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. That's pretty clear. He worketh and wills in you to do what he desires to get done in you, not what you want to get done. It's all about his plan, his purpose, and what he needs done here, and you are just a tool. I'm going to read that again in the Amplified Version. Philippians 2 verse 13. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and his delight. Everything you should do is about him. It's never about you. And it's always about him because it's, he's using you to reach other people. The Bible tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And those of you who have listened to my messages before, you know that his righteousness is also us, his people. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Those are those that have been predestined to be brought to the kingdom that have yet to be found. They are also the righteousness of God who we should, we should be seeking. And we do this with our gifts and talents. He'll use anything. It's people who have a gift. They have a gift to raise money, and it's for the kingdom. How many of you know that when we are given money that way, it is not just for us to sit on or for us all to live on well. Not said that you're not going to have a nice home, but you shouldn't be sitting on mansion after mansion after mansion, and, 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 and the flock is starving. That's just not God. Now, how is it that our loving Father how is it that he causes us to do his will? How are we supposed to know which way to go and how? The Bible tells us that the word of God is a lamp to our feet. How our loving father does this. He gave us his word for the renewing of our minds. When we take his word, we are, we are, being, we are beginning to make our thoughts his thoughts. 
His thoughts become our will. He will cause our thoughts to become agreeable to his will. The more we take in his word, the things that we desire and want to do are going to line up with his way of living and being, which is holiness. That's all it is. Holiness. Agreeing with the way, what, what the Lord says right, you say is right. What the Lord says wrong, you say is wrong. And the more you take in his word, it's going to be in you just as, it's going to happen so easily, just the way you breathe. Even though you have this flesh war against you, that's why you subdue the flesh by the word of God. You take the word of God and you take every thought and lead it away captive and teach it to submit to Christ. And that's according to the word of God. I'm going to read Isaiah. Isaiah 55 verse 8. And the Bible tells us, because you hear people say this all the time, and this is when they're trying to make excuses for why they're not doing what they should do. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. You notice what he didn't say here? He didn't say that your thoughts couldn't be your, his thoughts couldn't be your thoughts. That's why he tells you to renew your mind. If your thoughts can't become where his are, why would he tell you to do this? And I'm going to prove this scripturally. He does not tell you that your thoughts can't become his. This is why we renew our mind so that we think the way he thinks. And then he said, the Bible tells us to be holy as the Father is holy. And if we don't have his thoughts, how can we be holy? And people need to understand that. That's our natural thoughts. Our natural thoughts are not his, his, his way, his thoughts. And our natural ways are not his ways. But our spiritual ways are his ways. And our spiritual thoughts, guess what? They're his thoughts. Yet he didn't say that we couldn't attain the thoughts. This is why he sent his word for the renewing of our minds so that this carnal mind can be renewed and brought into submission to Christ. The results of this will be we will walk with his thoughts, his will, his plan, and his purpose in our hearts. And we will fulfill, we will fulfill. The Bible says walk in the spirit, you can't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how we, that's another example of us having his thoughts. Because if you walk in the spirit, he's spiritual. The spirit man, and Lord knows I don't have all these scriptures before me. They're just in my heart coming. That the spirit, the, the, the Bible tells us that the spirit judges all things perfectly. A man who is spiritual judges all things perfectly, but yet no one can judge him. That's a spiritual man, not that natural man. Now I'm going to move down to Proverbs uh, 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his word. This is what I just said. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will, that your plans will be established and succeed. Another way, our thoughts will become his thoughts. I'm going to read Proverbs 16 to 3 in the Amplified Version. Roll your works up on the Lord. That means roll your works, everything. Commit and trust them wholly to him. That means completely. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will, so shall your plan be established and succeed. We move forth and we take up our cross and we follow him. And this is a short message within a message because I'm actually going to do a little bit of this separate on another message because it's just important for the understanding of taking up our cross. Matthew 6, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I'm doing this because this is important to the work out your own salvation. And you need to understand what he means for you to work out. Let's not, we, let us not get that scripture twisted either, is what I'm saying. We take up our cross by moving in the capacity. How we take up our cross is by moving in the capacity in which the Lord has called and appointed us. That's how we take up our cross. Meaning if you are a worship leader, you do that in full capacity with your whole heart to the Lord. If you are a teacher, do that in capacity. If you are a preacher, do that full capacity. I don't care if he got you cleaning, do that unto the Lord. If you are a godly mother and a stay-at-home wife who supports your husband as he does his ministry, do that to full capacity. That is how we are able to move forth in the capacity. That's how you take up your cross today. You have taken up your cross when you move forth in obedience with what he has placed you here to do. The Lord has bore his cross. And he has enabled us to bear ours. He did not tell us to bear his cross. He's already done that. And what he did, nobody else can do. He was the only one that could walk sin free. He was the only one who was the only begotten son. He was the only one came who was God in the flesh and took, took on, became sin to redeem us. That's a cross you can't carry. 
He said, let him take up his cross. Our cross is fulfilling the will of God for our lives. That's the cross you pick up. And he's enabled you to do that. And it's going to be by his might and by his spirit that you do it. You ain't even doing that on your own. And matter of fact, I'm going to break down the word bear. He said, take up your cross. He enabled us to bear our cross and to amplify it. To bear is to put up with something or somebody unpleasant. Hmm. That's the world. We live in a very contaminated world and it's very rough and it's grievous to your spirit to live in this world. To support or to hold in a certain manner. That's to carry yourself in a way that is unfeigned in the body of Christ. Another version. To have rightfully or rights title. To have rightfully, to have something rightfully or rights or title of office. And I can go all day on what that is. We kings and priests all day long. To have temper and behavior. The next part, contain or to hold, to have within. And by grace, we contain and we hold the Holy Spirit. The next one, to behave in a certain manner. We have grace. We will bear people lovingly, showing the fruit of the Spirit with long suffering. Another part to bear, to be pregnant with. You heard me speak on that because by grace, we perceive unto conception. Another version of bear is to bring in. By grace, we compel and we bring in. We multiply. We be fruitful and multiply. I told you, it ain't just about multiplying babies. It's about multiplying money, multiplying things, multiplying gifts, multiplying believers. We multiply. That's what we do. And then another one is to bring forth. By grace, we speak and bring forth. And another version of to bear is to give birth. Huh. What you have conceived in your spirit you will bring forth in this natural realm. Whether it is foolishness or whether it is full of grace and power, what you have planted in your heart, what you have conceived in your heart is what you will bring forth. The Lord has taken up his cross, which has enabled us to bear ours. Don't try to carry his. He has already done it. He told us to take up our cross, not his. This is our calling and our appointment in this life. That is how you work out your own salvation. Now I'm going to go to the part to where I'm just going to give you a few scriptures to think on. Because with fear and trembling, no, it is not for us to be terror. The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Good, behold the goodness and the severity of the Lord. He has tenderness and love for his beloved and his children. Those who are not his in the world are disobedient in the contrary. Yeah, that's a different kind of fear he's speaking of. But yet even with them, he's speaking of them rejoicing and trembling in awe of how powerful he is. I'm going to read Jeremiah 39 verse 9. And it shall be to me, and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and a honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tre- they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Now, now I want y'all to pay attention to that. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Another example. Mark chapter 5, verse 32 through 34. And he looked around. He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. This is the woman who had the issue of blood. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole. She was fearing and trembling, rejoicing. She knew she was healed. She was fearing and rejoicing and trembling for goodness. She knew what had been done in her. You have to look this this stuff up. This is not this terrible fear. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You are to work it out in reverential reverence and awe of his power and sovereignty. Because there's trembling where you shaking from, from joy, from tears, from, from, from his goodnesses. Have you ever got something where you were so excited because it was so good you just shook? And it's nothing compared to the kind of trembling he's talking about. But I know some people have had those kind of experiences where you was, it was such a good thing that had just come into your life. Maybe somebody hit a lotto. I don't know. Where you were so excited, you shook. Or where you thought somebody might have been in one of them buildings that blew up or something and come to find out they came out of there, you shook 
because you were so overjoyed that your loved one was okay. Good. You, you have got to pay attention to what the Bible says. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Psalms 2 verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Hmm. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Now I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Serve the Lord with reverent awe and worshipful fear. Rejoice and be in high spirits with trembling. Be in high spirits with trembling. I don't know about some of y'all, but I've trembled when I've just been rejoicing in the Lord and praying in the spirit. My body shook. Pay attention. The Lord with reverent awe. That's what that fear means. With reverent awe. To be in awe. And worshipful fear. And we know what worshiping means. What does it mean to worship the Lord? And be in high spirits with trembling. Be in high spirits with trembling. Pay attention. So brothers and sisters, let's study to show ourselves approved, a workman, by the grace of God, rightly dividing the word of truth, not to strive and to work for what he has already, what he's already given us. We are to rest in him. And I want to make a note of that too. To rest in the Lord doesn't mean inactivity. We work the talents and abilities he has given us to draw others to the goodness of God and to encourage one another that no one falls behind. We must understand to rest in the Lord is to be confident in all that he has already done and boldly walk in it. He has removed every burden and destroyed every yoke. Don't pick it back up. Don't pick back up what he has already taken from you. We ought to move forth in confidence. And then what we do is we, we put forth our faith in what we believe. We put a demand on that faith, which means you got to know what the word of God says you have. You have to know what the, who the word of God says you are. And that's a whole nother message. We're not separate from Christ. And when the body of Christ finally get that, because the Lord has been showing me this, and they'll be like, oh, you trying to say you Jesus, you God? No, he's in me. What he's trying to get you to realize is that the demons don't know the difference between you and him when you're moving forth in the spirit because we are literally, we are in Christ. We are not separate from him. We never can be because we are only alive in him. Those of us who are born again are alive in Christ. We are dead today. This body is only alive by the spirit of Christ. You have got to get that. So we are to worship the Lord in, rev in awe. And worship for fear. And he said rejoice in high spirits with trembling. In, the, in high spirits. And I just wanted to lay that out on a couple of things. Because I was, you know, it was so many different things when I would hear people always use this words, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And they would always use it in a way that like you had to be come to the throne timid and crawling on your knees. No, you are his son and you are his daughter. You walk and you talk with the Lord. I've said this before. We worship our father because we know who he is. I'm going to use the example. Yes, he's God. He's almighty. He's the creator of all things. We have life and death is all in him. He is God. And he happens to be our father. So I'm just going to use the example. Say, for instance, you're the president's children. They know he's president. When they cry to him, do you think they say, Mr. President? They say, Daddy. And that's what you're supposed to do. You cry out, Daddy. You know he, yeah, he's God. But is that how you cry out when you call him? He has sent his spirit forth in our heart whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It's a good thing to worship. It's a good thing to fall upon your knees and pray. But I say again, many of believers have yet to get up off their knees, walk and fellowship and talk and get to know their father in that light. We are sons and daughters of the most high God. Remember that always. I want to take this message before the Lord. I will, like I said, I already have this in a a blog and I'm going to add this video to the blog. So the full ministry notes are there. So you can actually go and see everything I had noted here and you can take it before the Lord and you can study it yourself and, and minister it yourself, learn it, you know, share it with someone else. I mean, that's why I put it there. I don't own this. It's the word of God. And any message he gives me is for somebody else to share. I, I appreciate those of you who ask if you can share it, but you really don't have to just share it. That's why it's here. We learn and we pass on iron sharpens iron that we build up one another that no one falls behind. We are one.
and you can't look past your brother and sister, and you can't step over them on your way to the sanctuary. You can't become a stumbling block to them while they're on their way to Christ because the Lord tells us to do good unto all men, but especially, he did put in especially, especially to those of the household of faith. So take this message again, and until then, continue to worship the Lord, to rejoice and be in high spirits with trembling, and to worship him with worshipful fear and reverent awe. He is so worthy of praise. And those of you who have had experiences with him, no one can bring an argument good enough. Don't worry about nobody talking about you. Don't worry about the hecklers. You keep your eyes on the Lord because if someone has become a burden in your life, they shall be removed. If they have become a yoke about your neck, they shall be destroyed. Huh. And it's the anointing. You just, you can't help it. You don't have to watch your back. He got it. Beloved, Stay watchful and prayerful according unto the word. He tells us to watch and pray because Jesus is coming. We don't know how much we're going to see before he does, but he's coming. And we are to watch and pray and try to reach as many of the lost as we can and help our brothers and sisters while we are here. Never sleep on it. Stay watchful. Grace be with you. I love you all. Please stay tuned for the messages that are to follow. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.